Hello everybody. Thanks for coming back with me for another week. I'm obviously at Target. I've noticed that they have stocked the shelves with things that aren't pastel. So they did have more to offer for Halloween this year, which is great because I actually saw some really cute stuff. But I'm actually at Target because I needed to buy a deep oxblood red lipstick. I have an idea in mind for an outfit I want to wear. We are going to see Iron Maiden in the Who tonight and I wanted a new lipstick and do my nails and just look cute. So that's what I'm doing at Target. But this week we have some cool stuff happening. I actually go to a historic fashion exhibit. I was invited by a local nonprofit, and I actually also volunteered for an event, but we'll explain more about that later. It's going to be a really fun vlog, so I hope you guys are excited, and let's get into it. I am back. By the way, uh, did I unbox this with you, right? The Ghani, I got it from the Real Real beanie. I love it so much. So cute, I finally get to wear it. Look, I had to get it because... <laughs> Look at the little ghosty. I love him. I had to. I'm having a ghost thing right now. I'm really into just the look of a ghost. Like the little cute friendly ghosts like Casper. And then for the show tonight, I literally stood in Target and googled gothic red lipsticks. I got so many different search results and then a lot of people doing TikToks which was actually really useful. This one has the sticker intact, which, but yeah. So I ended up going with Maybelline's Composer. That's looking good. Yes, okay. Lipstick is solved for tonight's look. And then I wanted to paint my nails too. So I went with this. It's called Galaxy by Sally Hansen. It's the quick dry in Lunar Love has this, I don't know if it's picking it up on the camera or not, because it's that time of day where the light's dancing in the kitchen, but it's just like a galaxy black. So it's black with grays and glitter and all sorts of stuff. And I think that'd be kind of fun for tonight. And then I'll show you my outfit later, but I'm gonna eat something. Well, I am pretty much ready other than putting on what I'm wearing. I haven't used this. Remember I was saying that I wanted to rotate all of my makeup that I already have from my makeup cabinet. Cap cabinet. So I'm using the Man Eater from Tarte. This is such a good palette of just basics. Nudes, browns, black. It's got everything you need. It's a really good travel palette. And if you like pinup makeup, this one was perfect. I don't know that this is still around. But that's what I have on. And then I have just a light brown eyeshadow as my wing. And no fake lashes or anything. Just natural me. <laughs> oh natural. Oh my god, this is the most natural I've ever been. I have no lashes. I have no fake nails. And I have my natural hair. Oh my god, not even a fake tan. Who is she? But I, I can't wear my gels anymore. I did start having really terrible reactions. So I'm giving up on it. I'm done. So I just have on that quick dry Sally Hansen and then I put a little bit of this orange copper glitter over top. So it has this swampy green reflect. It's really cool. Isn't that neat? I like it. And my new lipstick. We're good. All right, this is the first thing I'm going to put on. I just want to layer because it's supposed to be, you know, a little chilly out, but it'll be hot at the venue. So I'm not gonna wear leggings or anything. This is a little H&M tank and it's brown. So I'm just gonna wear this. It's tiny, so <laughs> we're gonna cover it up, but at least we've got the base. Okay, and now we wanna layer it. Obviously the go-to for a concert would be a flannel. Now we're gonna put on a harness. So if I get hot, I can just do the around the waist situation. You know what I mean? And we've got the fry boots I'm gonna wear with it. And uh, yeah, we are ready to go. Badass. 
moved on. Yeah, like they they went out and they looked in the sky and saw visions and went, you know what? If we carry on with this bullshit, we're going to end up in a weird place. It's nice when you get the band tea from actually going to the show. It just has so much more special meaning to it. And also, in 20 years, when this is already going to be considered vintage, it will be an original, you know? And I'll be able to be like, I remember when I went to see Iron Maiden. <laughs> but the show was so good. I can't believe that these guys are in their 60s and rocking across the stage the way that they do. There was pyrotechnics. There was... Eddie, who is like the cool like warrior character that they have. Um, Eddie would come out and he was on like obviously some sort of stilts or something because he was massive and he would walk across the stage. He was this big monster guy. And every time Eddie came out, I got so excited. I love Eddie. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. So that was really cool. And uh, yeah, we just enjoyed ourselves. Before I go downstairs, I wanted to show you the uh, merch that we got. So I got this. I'll show you Lyle's downstairs. He got a cool green one, but this is a... Uh, the band tee that I got. It has the door on the back. Marvin, look out, buddy. <laughs> I tip to you, if you're going to get band tees at a concert, um, something as epic too is like an Iron Maiden tee. I would say size up two sizes to maybe even three sizes. If you want it to fit down to your elbow and be almost like a dress so that you can really have fun with styling, you could wear it with yoga pants and it covers your butt. You can wear it with biker shorts in the summer. You can layer it however you want. The bra tuck situation, so it kind of has that casual tucked look. You can tie it. So when they're big like this, it's easier to tie them in a knot. You can kind of do this vibe with some really baggy jeans. I think it would be super cute. And I also like doing the back tie. So you can also just back tie it. And then you can either leave the knot out like that or what I tend to do is just tuck it. And then it's got a bit more of a, you know, shape to it, but then it still gives you that bat wing. Little styling tip there for you if you like band tees, but it's so comfortable. It's like the best. Good afternoon. Gosh, my house looks dark. It is, it's pretty overcast this morning. I volunteered to help the Tacoma Historical Society with a upcoming event where they will be needing, well, they don't need it, but I was like, you can really use it. <laughs> but um, I volunteered to do makeup for their fashion show. They're doing an entire event, the City of, Des the City of Destiny Festival, which is going to be featuring clothing and fashion over the years from the 18, late 18, 1800s to the early 2000s. And it's just like all about vintage everything. There's gonna be people like dressed up in historical clothing and role playing. There's gonna be tons of vendors, a lot of vintage vendors and clothing. It's all about the clothes. So they have three different fashion shows. One's actually gonna be featuring local artists, but I'm gonna be doing the vintage one. I'm gonna do the makeup on the vintage uh, fashion. And so I'm gonna go talk to her about basically what uh, the outfits will look like so I can start to plan the looks that I'll be doing on each model. So that'll be going on soon at the end of the month. Okay, the curator is Elizabeth, so that might be who's giving me the tour. I was invited essentially to come tour the current exhibit, which is the Bustles to Blue Jeans, which is 120 years of fashion in Tacoma. And we're just gonna 
talk about all the vintage clothing and accessories and things that they have on display and just um, over time like historically how clothing and fashion has changed over the years especially here in the Pacific Northwest but I'm so so grateful that they have invited me I mean it's a free thing you can go do anybody can go do it so if you're looking for something to do on a rainy afternoon with your family or your friends or your kids this would be a really fun exhibit to go walk through and just learn about like fashion history if you're into that and yeah, I'm just like really grateful they invited me for the tour. I of course couldn't go to a vintage fashion uh, exhibit without wearing vintage. This is one of my favorite dresses. I wear it all the time. You guys know that. It's a comfortable dress that I can wear when I just want to be cozy and warm and you know, but still look really cute. It's my go-to. It's my go-to. So all that jazz obviously has been around for a long time. If you see those dresses at the thrift stores, they're definitely vintage. <laughs> yeah, it buttons. It really does truly button all the way down. And then I actually think I might go change my boots because I grabbed the wrong ones. And that's actually something that's interesting I got to do today is I got my boots out of storage. <laughs> this is the first time this season. The first time, I'm not gonna say year because I wore them obviously in the winter in the beginning of the year but all my boots are back baby and these i got repaired at the end of the season by the shoe cobbler and that's the local tacoma shoe cobbler he's amazing he's the one that i was saying in my video last week that his entire store smells like vetiver they no longer smell like it but when i first picked these up these strongly strongly reeked of the vetiver oil and he repaired the bottoms which obviously i've worn them since yeah he repaired them and shined them up and made them like new again and these are mark jacobs that i got off of the real world sorry i'm so winded i've just been running around all morning and somebody had inquired about a pair of boots i have for sale and i had to get as close to them as i could because these are my favorite i would much prefer these boots so I'm just gonna have to try to find them when they go on sale again on the real world because now when you go on the real world, these are like over $400 again and in great shape, honestly, at the bottom. And these are 38 and a half, but I'm a eight. And so I don't know why I thought I could get these and fit them. I don't know what made me think I could wear these. So I am definitely not a 38 and a half. These are what? See, these are 38s and they fit. This is what's so confusing about designer shoes. Like, how do the 38s fit me and the 38 and a halves don't? Designer shoes, like I have a pair of Louboutins. I'm a nine in those. Yeah, see I'm a 39 in the lubes. But anyway, if you wanna buy those Chloe boots, they are for sale. So if you want them, let me know. I can show you the receipts that I bought them off of the real real to authenticate that they're real, but you can feel them. <laughs> like all you have to do is touch them and you're like, oh yeah, those are the real deal because they feel so quality. They're just that really nice, heavy weighted suede that you could just tell. Hey boy. <laughs> Look at all the autumn leaves, everybody. My um, my camera's just sitting on my dash because when my car was broken into, they stole my camera stand. I don't I don't remember when the leaves came in. Like, when did this happen? Turn right, then your destination will be on the right. Okay, we're here. how much of a change there was over time. Yeah. But also you can see similarities, elements of clothing that do repeat, you know. The thing I really liked about this, I was hoping it would come through, and I, there's a dress I should have included here to make that happen, um, is that even though we're seeing drastic changes, at each step along the way, it's actually pretty gradual and things really make sense. Like, if you're just looking at, say, the bustle era, who would ever think of having this whole, like, extra skirt trailing behind you? But if you just keep going back year by year by year, it's really gradual changes from what happened before. I'm exploring this idea that fashion sort of works in cycles, that when you're into, like, a really long, tall silhouette, once you reach the practical end of how much you can do with, you know, really tall hats and really long, drapey dresses, 
when you can't get it any longer taller, you have to give up on that and start trying to make it wider. Oh, so you're just shape, you're changing the shape in some way, yeah, whichever drastic. Uh, you see things sort of responding to what came for. Items here from uh, the Wade Weatherhead family. Um, the dress is pretty narrowly dated to about 1883 in the donor notes, but the woman who owned it, uh, in this case Della's mother, died in 85. The sort of house dresser wrapper style. Beautiful. It's actually this one. Gorgeous. And we call those sleeves muff, uh, mutton, muttons? Le leg of mutton. Leg of mutton, that's right. It's fun when you look like 1830s. They have the huge sleeves. It comes back again in the 1890s. Comes back in the 1980s. It's like, you know. YSL's bringing it back right now. <laughs> People are wearing like huge yeah. points on their on their no, shoulders this now. Very well for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like to point out the the blouse here. We definitely wanted this one out because we wanted to make sure to show that there is a lot of color. And yeah. you don't see that often because A, you know, you have photographs that don't have color, right? Right. And then Hollywood has taken that and then made it seem like everybody only ever wore drab colors. That's a corset, I'm assuming, down yeah. here. So this corset, those pairs of shoes, that dress, and then a beautiful white um, sort of insertion work lawn dress all came in together in the same collection. The person who gave this to us thought this was a morning dress. Oh, year. right. Lucy Taylor. Lucy Taylor. Um, oh, and this little thing has all your exhibit yeah. info? Yeah, so each of the items is on here so that you can oh, great. learn a little bit more so about you, each you one. to read, then try and put pack, tags right on the sure. artifacts and the setup. And the little Rhodes Brothers bag there is, Rhodes at this time was like the biggest, one of the biggest department stores in downtown Tacoma. But another fun thing about Rhodes in particular, because we of course were looking at them up in all the newspapers we could find, they make mentions of, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Rhodes are going back to New York for a buying trip and they're bringing Miss So-and-so, head of the millinery department, with them. And so then they're meant, you see the ads showing up like a month later with, you know, latest hats from New York. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, and that was probably a big deal, you yeah. know. Which brings us to this amazing hat collection that we have. Oh, God, I'm a sucker for hats. Quite a few of them are from the same person. Same family, right? yeah, it's the Owen family. Um, so the earliest one, and so all the hats out here except for those two are from the same family. Wow. This is the earliest one, and we we're actually able to date it by the milliner's tag. She trained in Berlin in the 1920s as a milliner when oh, she was a teenager, wow. marries an American serviceman, moves to the United States actually before the war, and then ends up in Tacoma in 1947. Sets up this millinery shop in Tacoma called Rose Millinery, and her big selling point is that she will make you custom hats using her extensive knowledge of European hat styles. Does it say rose on it? Like Ro her tag rose? Rose milliner. I think we oh, I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for that if I ever see it. Before we move on to those, yes. I want to point out the cat meme. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. This is truly amazing. Yes. As you get into some of these newer items, we didn't have as many um, things because as you get closer to modern day, of course, people don't think of them as historic yet, so we don't really get donations. So we had, had to um, actually go out and start sourcing some. And so some of the items that you see here are on loan from various people, including on loan from Elizabeth and I's private collections. Oh, wow. Um, and then also oh, you went to local vintage clothing stores and estate sales and things like that. So mm. for, for some of these, so for example, um, this necklace right here is actually was my great grandma's. Oh, how I have cute! A of her jewelry. Oh, Elizabeth loves that. Has her great grandmother's um, the pearls, right? The white pearls. Yes. Oh. You know, so so that was, you know, kind of a fun touch for us that has a little bit more personal. Oh, how cute um, is that? What is this little this, lock That is pack. a perfume box. Oh, I love that. So if I had it's like a salve. I, would, well, I, I think I'll grab some gloves. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we wanted to oh, it's gorgeous. look at that. It's got that cameo on the front, and then it has the original oh, wow. perfume. There's bomb. a lot of uh, the salve in there. So, yeah. And what um, era, year do you think that's from? We think this one is probably from the 50s. Okay. Based off of the research that I could do when these were popular and the, and the design and hinge on there. Yeah. So most of the jewelry that you see in here is going to be 50s, 60s, um, including this little compact I love I okay so I'm this is a little makeup yes a little makeup compact there another really cool item we have is this this is a paper dress it was meant to be disposable and it was oh. part of the paper dress 
of the late 1960s. It was made by um, the Tacoma News Tribune, was doing a kind of teen event, trying to get teens involved in civic involvement there. Sure. And, and so some of the women who were running the booth, who were doing this event, um, wore these dresses. It's what really kind warm. of paper is it? It's um, well, it's hospital gown paper. It's yeah, oh, very okay. similar to that. It's it's 97% cellulose and then about 3% either nylon um, or some other synthetic. Yeah. And they're only meant to be worn two or three times and then thrown away. Wow. Yeah. And it and it took the you know the world by storm for a few years and then people were like, okay, this isn't really right. <laughs> really practical. In a rainy climate, probably not the dress you're gonna yeah. want to get caught out in the rain in. Exactly. For your foundation or blush. I have and two vintage makeup compacts. Mm -hmm. I'm starting a collection. So if I go to an antique store, the first thing I ask for is, do you have compacts? Yeah, this one I, I um, actually found at an estate sale here in Tacoma. Oh, see, I need to start going to estate sales. I've been sleeping on that and I know I need to be going to those. I want to say before we move too far past, this thing. Yes. That's also, that's also for my collection. <laughs> oh my God, that's amazing. Cause I'm a collar person. Yeah. I've been trying to make them and. Um, yeah. That one was made in, it's made in Japan. It's gorgeous. Oh, oh it's, I want to try to remake it. Like something it similar to that. So this dress over here is from um, a local vintage store called Good Vibes Vintage. It's on 6th Ave. Um, and I've seen it. We yeah. actually found this one because I follow them on social media and they posted it on the tag. It says Lou Johnson, Tacoma Lakewood. And I was like, I, I called up Elizabeth oh, and I was like, Elizabeth, look at this dress. What is this? Yeah. I haven't seen that tag. And so we immediately went down to get it and then I'll let Elizabeth kind of tell you more about what we discovered about Lou Johnson. Um, so Lou Johnson was a very fancy women's outfitter. And it's set up like an almost a historic house. So there'll be like a chaise lounge and a single dress hanging up on a hanger with a bunch of mirrors and oh, some shoes underneath. very personal feeling. So this is a, the descriptions I have from two people who remember going there as children are that you are greeted by a clerk when you come in who then becomes your personal shopper. Mm. And you tell her what you're looking for and she will bring out live models demonstrating the different dresses and oh. help you select the color you want. Yeah. And then get you the under things to go with it, the shoes to go with it, the jewelry to match, the gloves, and everything that yeah. will go into your outfit. Oh yeah, to get the, I mean, we wouldn't get that treatment now yeah. unless you were a celebrity or somebody. Yeah, even now. I love this. So I found this and it's a makeup mirror. It's like your Instagram filters, it mm -hmm. has a filter. So you can, it lights up and still you can works. change. Yeah, it does still work. Wow. It's not plugged in right now, but it but does still work. So you can change the lighting to replicate what it would look like day, office, home, or evening. Oh, how so funny. So that you could tell it. what your makeup will look like under yeah. that light. Oh, and I wonder how accurate it was. <laughs> I know, I was kind of wondering that too. Um, <laughs> But you gotta imagine the fluorescent lighting of that time sure. and, yeah, and everything like that. So, and it, and it does also um, kind of shift so that you have your oh, your close up, your close -up yeah. Your, and it even says just the makeup mirror yeah. on the front of the it. Makeup mirror, General, Electric. General Electric. How funny! <laughs> the stirrup pants. Right, the stirrup pants. Love it. I remember having to wear those when I me needed too. Them. I needed them. Well, I Did you? <laughs> Them. <laughs> yeah, my mom would get them and I absolutely hated them. So this shirt here still has the original Bob Marche tag. Oh yeah, look at that. And then this skirt here has the original Nordstrom's tag. Our caboodle here. Love it. Is, I had know, one. They are back. They're they are back. You could still buy them. It's crazy. Pretty much everything that you see in here comes from Elizabeth's or Elizabeth's sisters or mine's childhood. Nice. This is all very end of the 80s through the 90s. Yeah. Baby fat jeans. Lo oh my god, they are baby fat, they aren't are they? Fat oh my goodness. Love that. We're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> we need to build them out. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, you guys. That was so epically fun. I really enjoy talking to other people who are enthusiastic about vintage, upcycling, historical fashion. These girls know their stuff and it was just so cool. I hope that I was able to get all of the information I can into 
a moment. I trust myself to edit that together nicely. <laughs> we did sit down and have like a little meeting to talk about the plan and um, how many models I'll be doing makeup on and I got to see some of the clothes that were pulled for that. So that will be really fun to get to do all the makeup and conceptualize something that will be period appropriate. I loved it, so good. And also we talked about estate sales and that is something that we need to address here on this YouTube channel is why have I not been going to estate sales? A whole new world <laughs> has opened up. I wanted to unbox my Ipsy. First thing up, Living Proof Full Thickening Blow Dry Cream. I could use some thickening blow dry cream. Let's see here. Apply to clean, damp, detangled hair starting mid-length two ends comb through hmm don't know what to say it smells like um a nice smelling product but i don't have a <laughs> fragrance note to give you here because it just smells like hair product it smells nice i like it living proof is expensive so getting that in ipsy is always nice because otherwise i probably wouldn't buy it one thing i don't love spending money on is hair stuff Makeup Forever Mist and Fix. Wow, that's a good one. Check it out. It's like really spitty. And you guys know how I feel about that. This is how I like it. Now I know this is an aerosol can and this is probably a lot nicer for the environment. So I get it, but I really like a fine mist. Kula has my favorite fine mist that is non-aerosol. Seraphine Botanicals, Diamantine. Diam diamond, di diamantine. I can't say that. <laughs> little pillow. Looks like a little, little pillow. Hey, it's pretty. A lithe brow sculpt to clear. Pretty good. I think the true test is to try to do like a faux lamination and just see how well it sticks with nothing else on my brows, and then I'll know. Oh yay, this is the perfume. I'm really going through a perfume phase with my Ipsy orders these days. I just want more. I want all the things. <laughs> I want to explore different fragrances and have different options. And I love this because it has actual rose quartz in the bottle. But rose <clears throat> is one of my top favorite scents. And it always has been. And I think the reason why is because it reminds me of vintage. It reminds me of thrifting. It reminds me of old things. Things your grandmother would have. Rose is a very grandmother smell. So it just 100% reminds me of grandmas in the best kind of way. Oh, I really like that. Mmm. It's very rosy. Cashmere wood, cedar wood, musk, and rose quartz. That's what sold it, me on it because if it has cedar wood, but then also a floral, I'm in. Just give it that earthy kind of like, gosh, that's nice. Calm it down a little bit. You know what I mean? Oh my God, that's so, it's kind of sexy. It's sexy and sweet. This is a date. This is a date night perfume. Yay, okay, this is something I needed. This is Soothing AHA Body Lotion. And I'm almost out of my lotion that I got at Bath and Body Works. That was like the dressed up in white one. Very floral, almost too floral. And this time of year we get so dry. Are you guys dry? Everything's so dry. It's gonna be hard to smell anything because that rose quartz is intense. I, I think I like it. Oh, it's subtle. That's what I wanted. I wanted something kind of more subtle. The last one is just so floral. I really like it. That's really nice. I'm just gonna have this next to the bed. You know all right well that's it that's everything i've got to go get my makeup kit ready tomorrow is a really busy wedding makeup morning good morning getting ready for the day we're going on a dog walk my favorite Sundays, we wake up slow. We just lay in bed. One of us will make coffee. Whoever goes and makes the coffee, the other person usually is the one who has to go get it and like fix it and bring it. And then we just like lay there 
<laughs> all morning. It's so great. Sundays are my favorite days because I have my family with me. All of us are home, cozied up in bed. It's the best. But we are going to take these dogs for a walk because they desperately need to get out of the house. Um, I'm just going to do my dog walking quick like face for the day just for the whole day. So anywhere I go, whether it's errands, out in public, whatever, um, it's just something really light. So CeraVe Lightweight Moisturizer, take your cheapest foundation because days like this don't waste your good foundation. But I like a little bit. So this is just me making, I actually am a couple of shades of this foundation all together. So I'm mixing two to get my shade. It's that time of year where I don't know what color I am unless I self tan. Hmm. Already, being that it's Sunday, I'm kind of thinking about my upcoming week and what I have going on. Things are starting to pick up in every aspect of my life, which is great. But also, I need to stay organized so that I can keep all of it in order. You know what I mean? When you've got like a trillion things going on at one time, you gotta like spreadsheet that shit. <laughs> So that's what I have to do today is kind of sit down and write out my schedule for the upcoming week or so. We have events happening. We have some worky stuff happening. Lots of worky stuff happening. I've got meetings. I've got, I've got like two businesses that I'm talking to about possibly doing some microblading, but that last one didn't work out because she found somebody who was able to fill more space than I was. So I got kind of bumped out of place, which is fine. I couldn't commit to as many days as she needed someone to be in her shop. I just am not established. This is the hardest part about getting into microblading is that it's really hard to establish it because you don't have clientele yet. And so it's like just getting into something without help is really hard. I would say that to anybody who's thinking about microblading, like find a situation before you pay for all the school and stuff where you're able, you're gonna be able to work or else you're just gonna throw your money down the drain. That's what it feels like I did. I got all that. I mean, I have a place I can do the work out of Seattle, but I'm really wanting to keep my, all of my business in the South End. So that's been the only reason why I haven't been doing it. If anybody's been wondering, like whatever happened to microblading? Oh, I'm still into it. I still have all the stuff and I'm practicing. I have my practice skins. Sometimes I'll just like watch a YouTube video. There's a couple of really, really successful microbladers out there that have a YouTube channel and just watch them do their job so I can stay, you know, and then I follow a bunch. So following them definitely keeps it fresh in my mind. But one of my, one of my contracts I had with this business when I was saying work stuff was like stressing me out. I had this like one that was the most hours I, I was working was with this one company and they just closed. So that's why I was like scrambling the past couple of weeks to figure out like how to fill that hole of like space because bridal season's slowing down. They, they just had told me like two weeks ago that they were closing and then now the website's already down, which is like what I, that was my job was like blogs. I did all their blogs and their anything the, the executive needed. I was his assistant. I found something else. So that's great. Hopefully it's gonna stick and be good and we'll work out but that's the thing about being self-employed is your um business goes up and down and up and down and you find yourself doing like five hustles just to make one passion that you have stay afloat you've got to work the hustle I mean, sometimes you have to do many things and that's where i'm at i'm doing many things and I don't mind doing many things. I actually really like that feeling of just like being really, really busy. But the one thing I, I would prefer if I was doing that is that like lots of money was coming in and that wasn't necessarily the case. I felt really busy and like nothing really coming in. But things are starting to look up. I did a lot of 
I feel like if I meditate on things and I really focus on them and I really just like ask the universe for answers and like how to get what it is that I need abundantly, something usually ends up working out. Just work my magic, you know? And I just have to keep doing that. Refresh, refresh. I got this thrifting, can you believe it? Everything I usually wear is thrifted. Do I even need to say that? Anyway, we're going on a lovely dog walk. It's gonna be a really pretty area. So I just wanted to get some final video of the week for you guys of that, just showing you how beautiful the Pacific Northwest really is. I mean, it's just so pretty out here. And so I thought I would show you some of that, but um, then we'll say goodbye. So yeah. gorgeous day. It's a little windy. Tons of critters in the water today. Doggies everywhere. Marvin's having a field day. Are you in your happy place? Are you in your happy place? Yes?